Today we have a very interesting and important topic. It's about brakes in cars. When automotive engineering began to gain momentum at the end of the 19th century, initially brakes were not considered. There was a good reason for this. They simply weren't needed. After all, the friction in the drivetrain of the first cars was so great that the vehicles could brake on their own without the use of brakes. However, the speed of the industry's development was accelerating as quickly as the speed of the cars themselves. The power of the engine and the mass of the vehicle were constantly increasing. Just four years after Carl Benz presented his car, British engineer Frederick W. Lanchester invented the disc brake, for which he obtained a patent already in 1902. However, it was only several decades later that the disc brake was recognized and permanently utilized. By then, brakes had changed quite significantly. How do brakes work? The basic concept of brakes in any vehicle is simple. We need to stop something moving at a certain speed. Brakes convert the kinetic energy of the wheels into heat through friction. When we want to slow down, energy is gradually lost until we stop. This concept has been used in automotive ever since. Over the decades, only the way friction is used when pressing the brake pedal has changed. The earliest braking system consisted of a simple lever that moved a wooden block to lock the metal wheel. The driver had a special lever, which, when pulled, locked the wheel with a wooden element. This method was effective for steel rims used in horse-drawn and steam-powered vehicles. This brake could stop a vehicle moving at speeds of no more than 15 to 30 kilometers per hour in light traffic. But when the Michelin brothers introduced rubber tires at the end of the 1890s, steel-rimmed wheels became obsolete, as did wooden brake blocks. They became useless for a very simple reason. Wooden blocks wore the tires off the rims. The next idea was to permanently attach an additional element to the wheel and then attempt to slow it down directly to avoid damaging the rubber tires. Considered the foundation of the modern braking system, the mechanical drum brake was developed in 1902 by French manufacturer Louis Renault, a pioneer in the automotive industry. However, the first or one of the first to believe that a drum wrapped with a cable anchored in the vehicle's chassis could be used to stop a moving car was Gottlieb Daimler. He created the first concept of a drum brake in 1899. In 1901, Wilhelm Maybach designed the first Mercedes with a simple mechanical drum brake, where steel cables wrapped around the rear wheel drums and were operated by a hand lever. But it was Louis Renault who was recognized as the inventor of the drum brake, which became standard in cars. How do drum brakes work? A drum is attached to the wheel. Inside it are two thermal linings. When you press the brake, both linings are clamped and pressed against the drum. The linings slow down the drum, which stops the wheels. The first cars using this system used a complex system of cables and rods to transfer the force of the pressed brake pedal to the drum. In a nutshell, there was a roller under the brake pedal, similar to the one at the drum. Pressing the brake, the cable tightened over two rollers, pulling the drum lining lever. In the drum, there was a special tape that expanded, causing the linings to be pressed against the drum. The braking force depended on the force with which the brake pedal was pressed. However, drum brakes using cables had a serious flaw. Sometimes when drivers climbed a hill, the brakes unwound and the car began to roll, losing the ability to stop. Another problem was dust and water, which meant that this element had to be very frequently serviced and precisely adjusted. If the levers or rollers were misaligned and the cables were unevenly tensioned, each wheel braked with different force. It was quite dangerous. In 1918, Malcolm Lawhead, who later changed his surname to Lockheed in 1926, the company you may know as the Lockheed Martin Consortium, one of the leaders in the global defense and aviation industry, proposed a concept of a four-wheel braking system using hydraulics. Using cylinders and tubes, the Lockheed Hydraulic Company used fluids to transfer force to the brake shoe when the pedal was pressed. Importantly, hydraulic brake lines very rarely brake. They also do not require as frequent servicing as in the case of a mechanical system. The precision of braking is greater, and to brake, you don't need to press the brake pedal as hard. The hydraulic braking system was first mounted on all four wheels of the model Duesenberg car in 1921. However, the car had problems with numerous leaks. 
Engineers from Maxwell Motor Corporation created special rubber seals for the reservoir, eliminating the leaks. In 1923, Logheads improved brakes were offered as an optional upgrade in the Maxwell Chalmers car for $75. This new brake design was also used in Chrysler cars from 1924 to 1962. Other car manufacturers followed Chrysler from 1924. Subsequent car models equipped with improved four-wheel hydraulic brakes included the American Chrysler 6 Phaeton B70 and the British Triumph 1335s. By 1931, American manufacturers such as Dodge, Chrysler, and Plymouth were producing their cars with hydraulic brakes. But Ford and General Motors still used mechanical brakes. In the mid-1930s, GM partnered with Bendix, a hydraulic brake manufacturer. As more car manufacturers opted for the hydraulic system, Bendix decided to buy the Lockheed Hydraulic Company and take over the patent for this invention. Ford was the last manufacturer to still use the mechanical system. It was so until 1938. What were the disadvantages of drum brakes? Drum brakes were quite good and were used in almost all manufactured cars for the next 30 years. However, they had one major drawback. They heated up a lot when used frequently. As the temperature of the drum increased, the braking force decreased because the kinetic energy could no longer be converted into heat. Brakes began to fail when they were needed most, in emergency situations. So how to create better brakes, develop better linings offering more friction, and introduce a system that effectively dissipates the heat from friction? The linings had to be strong enough to stop the wheel, but soft enough not to damage the drum. Another way to increase friction was to apply more pressure. Until now, drums worked by expanding the linings. Engineers came up with the idea that the pressure of elements on each other would be greater when they are squeezed. Another idea was to increase the contact area to create friction. Ultimately, the best method for improving brakes was to get rid of the drum, increase the contact area, and change the braking method to squeezing. That's why instead of drums, engineers used discs. The disc brake was invented much earlier than it became popular. In 1898, Elmer Ambrose Sperry designed an electric car with front-wheel disc brakes built by Cleveland Machine Screw Company. Disc brakes work like bicycle brakes, where a clamp with brake pads squeezes the disc or rotor. However, it was William Lanchester, an English engineer who patented this idea in 1902. The biggest downside of his invention was the terrible noise it made caused by copper brake linings moving on a metal disc. Five years later, another Briton, Herbert Froude, solved the noise problem by lining the linings with durable asbestos, which was used in car brakes until the 1980s. What are the advantages of disc brakes? Discs dissipate heat much better for a simple reason. They are not inside the drum, and they are additionally cooled by flowing air. The larger the discs and clamps, the more friction they can generate and the better they dissipate heat. As in many cases of changes in motoring, the first disc brakes were used in racing. They debuted in Formula One in 1951. In 1955, Citroen was the first car manufacturer to introduce disc brakes in its cars. Disc brakes were more expensive to produce, but cars were becoming faster and there were more of them, so it became a necessity. This does not mean that drum brakes are unsafe and no one uses them anymore. We still use disc brakes in the automotive industry. When a car brakes, its center of gravity shifts forward, loading the wheels. This means that the front brakes do, on average, about 70% more work than the rear ones, which are not so loaded. And since drums are cheaper to produce and service, they are still used in many vehicles, mainly light and at the rear. How to make disc brakes more efficient? Most tuning methods are primarily about better heat dissipation. Some discs have a special space in the middle, allowing air to flow through it and take away the heat. We will also find special cuts allowing for the removal of heated air. There are also specially drilled discs available. And brake pads? Most are made of semi-metallic materials, that is, composite mixed with different amounts of metal filings to increase friction. However, this mainly depends on the region. For example, in Japan, pads are made of organic materials without steel and abrasive elements. 
They are quiet and durable, but are not suitable for cars reaching high speeds or with a large mass. Discs in racing cars heat up to over 500 degrees Celsius, so brake pads are made of sintered steel without any additives. This allows them to work better at high temperatures. If such pads were used in a daily driving car, they would simply squeal loudly during braking. If your brakes start squealing, it usually means that the brake pads are practically non-existent. For safety, manufacturers put a special marker in them, which is responsible for making these sounds. In any case, worrying sounds coming from braking are not a good sign. If the brake pads are not worn out, the brakes may be poorly adjusted, or some foreign object, such as a stone, may have gotten into them. That's it for today's video. Thanks for your attention. I encourage you to leave comments, likes, and subscriptions. This will help me grow and help the algorithm present the video to more people. Speak soon.